and welcome to Northern News. I'm Ashley Walsh. Thanks for joining us. Today we will be highlighting several event, recent events in the Northern Burlington School District, including Back to School Night at the High School, the Middle School Activity Fair, several varsity sports teams, Northern's FFA, a somber performance by our chorus, ongoing high school construction, and a great community event. In high school news, Northern Burlington recently hosted its annual back to school night, giving parents an opportunity to meet their kids' teachers and explore their new schedules. Let's hear from field reporter Alex Katz with more. Northern back to school night gives parents the opportunity to meet and interact with their child's teachers for this coming year. So for back to school night, I'm really excited about the energy that the parents bring into the building. Very much like the students' energy on the first day of school. When the parents arrive, they're excited to see all the different things that their children learn and experience throughout the day. The parents need to know what's happening in the schools. We are a community of learners here. It's not just the teachers or the counselors or the administrators working with students, but we really lean on parents and other community members to understand what's happening in the schools and to support the young adults that are coming through the school system so that they can continue being productive citizens after they graduate. It's a great opportunity to engage with parents uh, and students who even come along uh, to open up our doors uh, of the community of the school that we have, which is wonderful. It gives us some time to talk about the things that we have planned for the year and uh, you know just the good things the good times we'll be having together with their children. I've been coming to back to school night for about four years now and I personally like it. It gives the parents a taste of what we deal with every day. They get to meet our teachers, they get to understand more of what we struggle with, what we benefit from and the resources we have at our disposal during the classrooms and during the school day. I think that back to school night is an effective way for our parents to get to learn what exactly is going on in our classrooms and to get to meet our teachers. If our parents don't know exactly what's going on in our classrooms and what we, what we experience every day, then they won't be able to be as involved in our academic lives. It helps me build some relationships with my son and daughter's teachers, which will allow me, if there's any issues over throughout the year, to be able to contact that teacher. So I think it's helpful that way. Thank you to all the parents and staff that came together to make this night possible. From Northern News, I'm Alexis Katz. Across the campus, the middle school held an activity fair to showcase all the ways students can get involved in their school community. From art club to band, or FFA to STEM, the middle school has something for everyone. Let's dig a little deeper into the middle school's offerings. During the week of September 10th, Northern Middle School hosted an activity fair in their cafeteria. This gave students a chance to check out and sign up for various activities. The middle school activity fair takes place during lunch all this week, the first full week of school every year. It's an opportunity for the students to check out a little bit about all the clubs that they already know about or find out about new ones that they haven't tried yet. One of the goals at Northern Burlington Middle School is to help students find a way to be involved in our community. So we think the activity fair is pretty helpful for that because students may only know about activities that their friends are in, so this gives them the opportunity to look for things that they themselves are interested in as well. Some of the newer middle school clubs include the Yoga Club, the STEM Club. We've had a revamp on many of our existing clubs like STATS, Students Taking Action Together. A lot of our clubs are working together with community service projects. So it's pretty broad range of options, whether students are interested in service or something more technical or just more relaxing like yoga. So we have, we have quite a variety to choose from. The best way to get involved in middle school and have a great experience is to get involved. Just try a club. Go to the first meeting. You don't have to sign up for the rest of the year, but try it out. See who you're, if your friends are there. A special thanks to everyone who participated. For Northern TV, I'm Brittany Hope. In agricultural news, Northern's FFA is gearing up for the fall season by hosting a mom's sale fundraiser. Brittany Hope took a trip out to the greenhouses to learn more about it. This fall, Northern's FFA is hosting several fundraisers. Let's hear from an officer with more on these exciting events. As you can see, the Northern FFA is starting their first annual MUN fundraiser, and we're also doing our annual Krispy Kreme fundraiser starting September 19th. All of the proceeds from both the MUM fundraiser and Krispy Kreme, as well as most of our other fundraisers, go directly back to the Northern FFA chapter and all of the ad classes to benefit them. If you have any questions or want information, come see an officer or an advisor and they'll help you out. 
Thanks, Olivia, and keep up the good work. For Northern TV, I'm Brittany Hope. For this episode's sports news, we took a look at the varsity football team and field hockey team. Let's go to the fields with more. This, the team this year stacking up pretty well. I think that we're very prepared for the season up ahead. This season's going to play out pretty well. I think we're definitely going to get pretty far into the season. Um, and everyone's hopes is to go to the championships and get our ring. Our rival teams are definitely Pemberton. Uh, they've always been our rival. We have the Commander's Cup against them every year. So that's one to look out for, good game. I think Amir Stevenson, running back, is going to be a huge playmaker. Jacoby Lewis as well, he's a great wide receiver. And Mike Caloria, very, very good quarterback, very skilled. One of the main weaknesses we have is we have a pretty young line. That doesn't mean they're not skilled in any way, but they lack major experience that is important on the football field. The freshman team has one standout player that I can think of. His name is Chris Biles. He's a lineman, very athletic, very skilled. Uh, he's going to be someone to watch in the upcoming years. Northern's field hockey team is looking to have another competitive season. The team looks to make the playoffs once again. Hi, I'm Aida. I'm one of the four captains, and I'm a three-year varsity goalie for field hockey. The team I want to beat this year is Morristown because they're an extremely great group. My favorite things of field hockey are the people. I love the sport. I love the coaches. I just love everything about it. It's so much fun. It's a great time. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I am one of the four captains of field hockey this year, um, and I play left wing. Um, my favorite thing about the field hockey team is how close we are and what a great group of girls we are. Um, love every single one of them. Hi, I'm Julia Woodworth. I am one of four captains. The team I want to beat this year is RV. They're a very big competitor, and I feel like all field hockey players just aim to beat them. Hi, my name is Katherine Deeker, and I'm captain of the girls' field hockey team. I play defensive mid. My favorite thing about Northern's field hockey team is all the girls. Um, when I joined my junior year, I did not think it was going to be an easy transition, but they honestly made the transition from soccer to field hockey so much easier for me. Join, Join the field, field hockey team. team. It's, it's a blast. blast. <laughs> Good luck this season, girls. For Northern TV, I'm Emily Walsh. In community news, many kindergarten students took a big step this September and had their very first day of school. Let's go to Alexis Katz with a scoop on how things went for them at the special event in Chesterfield. Thanks to Chesterfield Kids for Community, the incoming kindergarten class is ready for the start of school. The local organization recently held their fifth annual kindergarten play date at the Crosswicks Community House. Several additional organizations set up tables for the nearly 75 new students to learn about all that's available to them in their community. The children and their families received a free book, bookmark, and stickers from the Crosswicks Library Company. The Chesterfield Police taught school bus safety and students got to board a real bus and practice fastening their seatbelts. The Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts each had a table. Chesterfield Elementary School was also on hand with the CPEF and the PTA. A special thanks for everyone who participated, and to WBNC. For Northern TV, I'm Alexis Katz. This episode's Spotlight Story looks at some of the construction taking place at the high school. With the passage of the referendum last spring, things are about to get very interesting on campus as the school looks to implement some much-needed upgrades. We spoke with the facilities director, Will McKee, to see how things are going so far. I'm Will McKee, the Director of Facilities here at Northern Burlington County Regional School District. Uh, the scope of uh, construction uh, over the next, this summer and over the next couple of years, um, there's a couple of different projects. One is the referendum, which is connecting the two buildings, doing a lot of upgrades in our building systems, electrical, HVAC, and the boiler. Um, so there's a bunch of different projects. Uh, the one project that we're doing right now, right behind me, is the electrical feed. We, we, we have to increase the electrical feed for the uh, high school because of the new addition. So that's, that's what these guys are doing, and that'll be done uh, by the end of the summer. Uh, and also this summer we're connecting the 300 and the 400 hallway on the other side to close that area so the kids don't have to go outside between the 300 and 400 hallway. So that'll be done this summer. And then we're going to go out to bid for the connection in uh, October, November and hope to break ground in uh, January. 
<laughs> well, and anytime you dig underground, you find things that sometimes you don't expect. So, so the, the, those are the things we're dealing with. And the big thing um, last couple weeks has been the weather. We had two weeks of rain, which kind of set us back a little bit because we we can't dig in, in, in the rain because it just becomes a big muddy mess. So, I, I would say weather is probably our, our our biggest hindrance so far this summer. It's going to have a day-to-day -day impact because we're going to be doing construction during the school year. I mean, we're going to concentrate and do most of it in the summers when we can. There will be construction during the school year, so there may be times where the students will have an exit closed and they're going to have to reroute. That'll be, you know, well publicized and, you know, in advance the teachers and, and Dr. Lopez will know or rerouting the students, but um, it's, going to, it's going to take a transition because if you're used to going out of you know room 112 and going to the east building you might not be able to do that you might have to go around a different way so there will be an impact once the the, the bids go out in in uh, October November and the construction companies come out we have a construction management firm and they will meet with whoever wins the bid and they will go over timelines and in those timelines obviously going to try to do the best you can you know in in, in a timely manner it's going to differ because of the, the students, faculty, and the staff, and the amount of um, people we have here. So, if they had an open site, or if, you know, if this was unoccupied, it would be, be totally different. So, there's going to be different standards, noise. Uh, they won't be able to be doing things like you know very noisy projects during the day because the students are going to be here. That's going to have to be you know at night or when the students aren't here. And also, there's there's different rules for a school. You know, there's there's no smoking on a school campus, and, and, and no tobacco use, and, and stuff like that. So the construction guys will know that, and uh, they will know that you know they can't do that on campus. And um, other intrusive things we, we won't be able to do either. You know, obviously anything that's smoky or anything like that, uh, you can't do while the students are here. So so uh, it, it is different than a normal construction setting. For this episode's Northern Stars, we wanted to showcase our chorus here at Northern. This year marks the 17th anniversary of the September 11 attacks, and the Northern Burlington High School Chorus Program continued their annual tradition of performing the national anthem during homeroom to reflect on that day and the tragedies that took place. Joey Skelza was on hand to observe. On September 11th, members of Northern's Chorus sang the national anthem to commemorate the tragic events of 9-11-2001. Well, I think that uh, it's a really good way to, to bring people together after you know this, this event that was designed to tear people apart. I think this is, this is a good way to bring in you know, a national symbol to remind people who we are. Hopefully they'll react well. I mean, I have no way of knowing what what people are going to think, but I don't know. Hopefully, they'll react well to it. A special thanks to Dr. Lopez, Mr. Taylor, and the chorus members who participated for Northern TV. I'm Emily Walsh. That wraps up this episode of Northern News. Please visit our district webpage for more information on our schools, our staff, and our students. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. For Northern TV, I'm Ashley Walsh.